welcome to our Tegan Daily Bread, your spiritual board meeting for Tuesday, May 25th, sorry, May 26th, 2020. I am your Madam President of the Artegan, Natalie, spelled N-A-T-A-L-E-E. Feel free to stay for all of the psychic tarot and astrology reports. Feel free to skip ahead as you are guided. As you are guided, I hereby officially call this meeting to order. Into the minutes recap, my loves. So... We're in retrograde season, so I feel like the minutes recap could just be like, well, it's long running thing, okay? Um, you're already looking back. You're already, whoa, 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 whoa. You're already, you're already doing that. You're already reflecting, okay? So grab something that's sort of at the forefront of your mind, and let's see if that is what's being channeled in, in this um, tarot spread today. End of the president's report. I don't really have anything of note to report Crazy dreams, crazy dreams, very prophetic and just really, it's, but that's not really, you might be having heightened dream experiences. I would, that would not be surprising at all. Um, uh, yeah, I got, I got, I got nothing. Okay. Into the astrology report. All right, guys. So we have the sun in five degrees, Gemini. The moon in 21 degrees Cancer, Mercury in 26 degrees Gemini, Venus is in 18 degrees Gemini, retrograde, Mars is in 9 degrees Pisces. Oh, that's what I wanted to say in President's Report. I'm sorry. Okay, so my President's Report, I want to talk about Mars. Mars is backtracked. Mars is going forward over the same points. And I had the date. Oh, shoot. It was February, no, March 8th. I think it's March 8th. February 22nd, February 26th. Those are unchecked, but I think when I checked, it was March 8th, around there. Um, that's what I wanted to say in press report. Okay, so Mars is in 9 degrees Pisces. So look at your texts, look at your photos in your phone, look at your emails from like February 22nd, February 24th, 26th to March 8th. I mean, just really look to see what you were talking about at that time. Because that's the Mercury retrograde at that time. Um, and with Mars going over that same area, that same place, there within retrograde season, there could be new communications coming to light. There could be new inspired actions to be taken in regards to that situation. That was weird. I saw the world, but it's not flipped up. Okay. Jupiter's in 27 degrees Capricorn retrograde. Saturn's in one degree Aquarius retrograde. Uranus is in eight degrees of Taurus direct. Neptune is in 20 degrees Pisces direct. Pluto is in 24 degrees Capricorn retrograde. North Node is in 29 degrees Gemini. We got a popper already. I guess it's time to begin. <laughs> Chiron is in eight degrees Aries. We have this Knight of Natalie. Oh, sorry. Okay. So your psychic word. So that's, so basically, oh, so basically astrologically, a lot of the same stuff that I already talked about yesterday, moon squaring Mars. Sorry. Ooh, sun squaring Mars, the sun in Gemini squaring Mars in Pisces. This is this is inspired action. And like I said, it might not feel so comfortable for your ego, but I feel like you know it's the right thing to do. It's the right action to take, even though it might not be super great for you, la-di-da, the you parade. It's the, if it's the right thing to do, do it. If it's nefarious, if it's deceptive, obviously don't do it. But there, there's an opportunity here to turn that square, that tension, you're fighting in yourself. It's like if you have an apology to give, okay? If you're the one that you have an apology to give, actually, this could be a really sophisticated apology. If it's your apology to extend out or even just goodwill, if it's on you to, to put out some goodwill in a connection and it's bothering you and you don't want to like eat the ego to do it, do it. Get to the point where you're comfortable doing it, where you feel where you'll feel really good about yourself after having done it because you know that you will. So it's really just kind of having that, that maturity to put that ego aside to do that, okay? 
The sun is trining Jupiter, trining Saturn, sextiling Chiron. You could really be creating some long-lasting positivity here, okay, that will ultimately serve you, which would serve your ego, but it's like baby steps. Take a, that bird's eye view, just kind of floating along in the sky. You see the birds? They're like just floating on the air. Their, their wings are literally just stretched out and they're literally just floating on the breeze, on the wind, looking down below. It, it doesn't matter that the weather is unpredictable or whatever, because whatever happens with the wind, they have a zillion feathers and they just like adapt. They just change their body to accommodate that wind, that change in direction. I don't know why I went into all that. Okay. What else we got? Mm. The moon is opposing Jupiter and Pluto as of 8 a.m. Pacific time. There could be a meeting in the middle between you and someone very powerful. It's a, the moon moves really fast, so it's a transitory, it's a temporal, like emotional, it's like you feel it, it passes. It happens, it passes. The fluctuation happens. It's also trining Neptune. Which is in Pisces. Oh my god, there's this itty bitty little spider. It's like so little. It's literally, look at how little it is. That is so gross. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, little guy. I'm sorry. I don't like to kill spiders. I love spiders. That was sad. I love all animals and bugs and stuff. <sighs> sorry, guys. A moment of silence for the baby spider. Okay. So. Oh, yeah. Neptune's in Pisces. Mars is in Pisces. That inspired action. It could lead to a breakthrough here. It's really the window is so short with that moon. Moon's always on the move. Now, Mercury conjunct Venus is in that square to Neptune and Pisces. So there is like pressure, tension, attention, focus on this, on, on this something Piscean, something Neptunian, because Mars is there. That's where I'm getting that from. So, okay, let's move on. So into the tarot report. Um, or actually, no, the psychic report, sorry. Into your psychic report. So your psychic report, your download is very, very, very straightforward and very simple. It is that the more powerful you are, the more powerful you become, the more important it is um, to connect with divine guidance, divine guidance, divine guidance. I know the word divine is like thrown around a lot, especially in the esoteric, spiritual, tarot, astrology, spiritual... <gasps> That was a huge bug. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. That was freaking massive, though. It was like that big. In the community, in the community, right? I really want you to meditate on that word and everything that it includes because true divinity is just so powerful in itself. So there's something about power here. And with that sun, square, Mars ego versus action and especially Mars being in a sign like Pisces now Mars will move into Aries and it'll be he'll be much more happy much more comfortable in Aries except he'll be in Aries for like five months retrograding which is not going to be comfortable for Mars because it's the exact opposite of Martian energy but we can use this it's like laying down so it, it, I feel like it'll be easier now more than ever to take inspired action so that you can, sorry, I just want to make sure, okay, 
I just want to make sure it wasn't an emergency. I, I felt a little bit of a, a panic there. I don't know, that could be you, could be like your phone going off and there's like a message that you get that like, but that's what I got and I usually just kind of, it's easy for me to ignore, but for some reason I really did want to check to make sure everything was okay. So that could be for you. Okay. Okay. So at this time that Mars is in Pisces, I feel like it's a great time for your ego issues or for your power issues, whatever it is, to, to, to have more of a, a subdued expression. What? To have more subdued expression. Okay. I just want to make sure it wasn't a bug on my neck. Okay. Tarot report. Tarot talk is Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? No, it's sorry. It's Thursday, May 28th. Thursdays are the days that I do classes. Last week's Astrology 101 got messed up because I had to move it from Thursday to Wednesday. Thursday was the new moon live and the new moon spread. And I didn't want to upset personal readings on Fridays. And it's that's what that was. So, But Thursdays will always be, three Thursdays out of the month will be the classes. Tarot Talk, Practical Magic Level 1, and Astrology 101. So that's just something to know going forward. Okay. Tell me about this mm, guidance, divine guidance, please. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mm. That's harsh for a page. That is very harsh for a page energy. We also have three cards face down. They are the chariot the Two of Cups, and the Knight of Swords. This is, uh, it is a rude awakening. It's a, um, I don't want to say rude awakening. It's a wake-up call. It's a wake-up call. I feel like you're going to know what to do. You're going to know what to do here. In a connection that you have. Let's start clarifying like this ASAP. What's up? I, I, I don't know what to tell you, kiddo. What's up? What's wrong? Oh my gosh. I'll be right back. First, I want to see what Vlad has to say about this. Um... Oh my God, I was just clearing space off my laptop and this goes with this. This is how it's supposed to go. The Knight of Cups, the Ten of Swords and the Page of Cups all together. This is your emotional maturity. The Page of Cups is no more. You've progressed into the Knight of Cups. I feel that's how you express yourself. You see how he's got a fish in the cup? It's like, oh, I think I love the fish in the cup. That's a great idea. And then it's like, well, no, they don't want that fish in the cup. And it kills you because it's like, oh, my God, no one wants my fish in the cup. Everyone hates me forever. You get through that and you kind of look at yourself. You reflect. The last thing that you see as you pass away is that bright yellow band of the waning sun. So it's like, that's the only positive part about that card. So it's like, you look to that, you look for your only source of what can I possibly be optimistic about? What can I look towards? What can I look forward to? What can I get out of the situation? And that's when the maturation happens and that's where the growth happens. And you evolve into a very princely Knight of Cups. That's my Romeo card. And it's like, you're able to present yourself on a steed you're not on your feet in your boots you don't wear boots you wear armor you wear these little shin guards you know your hat isn't a hat it's a helmet with little wings on it your cup is more refined it doesn't have a fish in it it's very beautiful your clothes are better everything's better you're very you're much more equipped to cross this little stream instead of trying to do it on foot 
it's bumbling a little bit, you can do it with some pizzazz. Some, I'm just getting like more polished actually, so it could just be that. Um, let's get an overall energy for the situation. Ooh, Six of Cups, I like this. Romanians honoring Vlad Dracula. You guys just wait. I am like obsessed with the tarot of Vlad Dracula. Let's see what Vlad has to say about Six of Cups. Obsessed. Six of Cups. Good memories, happiness, events from the past coming to prominence again. Look to the end of February, beginning of March. There is a single, sing, sorry, there is a simple happiness inherent in the Six of Cups, as might come to one remembering a pleasant thought from childhood. Good health and a joy of celebration is also suggested. The traditional image of the Six of Cups shows children in a garden, which can indicate a great many different themes, including friendship, country life, and sharing. The desire of, the Rom of modern Romanians to celebrate the achievement and life of Vlad Dracula is closely tied to their long struggle to maintain a national identity. Despite being surrounded on all sides by powerful countries with strong cultures, Wallachia and Transylvania have managed to preserve many of their traditional ways much like the Basques. Even the modern Romanian language is a purer version of the original Roman Latin that other Rom and, uh, than other Romance languages. Undoubtedly, part of Vlad's enduring legacy is the fact that stories of his cruelty caused Bram Stoker to appropriate the name Dracula for his vampire and write such a compelling story that the name would, have, would become synonymous with a kind of evil power. I love that I said evil power and, and the download to you was with with greater power comes a greater need for divine guidance. It's like, it's funny. I love this deck so much. Okay, so there's, there's goodwill here. There really is. I feel, okay, I feel like you may be insecure about your bumble, about your kerfuffle, but when you approach it, and I feel like that's part of your wake up call, is to go from this to this, and then you move your chariot forward and you, you come back and you're back in the game, kind of uh, energy with this person. This could be someone else to you. You know, if, if you received a very immature or a very unrefined offer of love or message or reaching out to you and it was just, awkward or wah, 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 you know that person can come back after they've grown into the knight of cups that's romeo that's remember romeo and romeo plus juliet he was always falling in love with people he was always falling in love with this person brokenhearted about that person thought it was love but it wasn't not until he met juliet And then it's like the fish tank and like the eyes. That's how that was communicated to me. The knight in shining armor and she was the angel. Ooh, I just got like weird. That was weird. That was a weird feeling. I feel like someone believes in you. That's so weird. There's there's something you remind them of a past love, a child of theirs, a parent of theirs, a family member of theirs, or this could be between family members, could be you and a family member. Let's clarify, let's clarify this first. Overall, everything's going to be okay with that Six of Cups. There's a lot of, like, real affection there. So even if whoever was bumbling or kerfuffling, um, the other person will have lots of heart to spare. That's funny. It's funny that you're taking it, or this person's taking it, like, you know, Ten of Swords. Tell us about the Ten of Swords, the Knight of Cups, and the Page of Cups, please. Whoa. Okay. Okay. <laughs> making me like Mike Myers and view from the top. What did you learn today, class? That you've got to get up off your ass to make a dollar when he tapes the dollar under their chairs. 
And guess what card it is? It is the sun. So it's like, it really, I feel like you're gonna make someone super happy. I feel like this person was probably rooting for you to like grow up. Like, oh, there's so much potential or they're so cute, they're so sweet, they're so well-intentioned. But, ooh, they're like, and I don't get that you were rough around the edges or that your person was rough around the edges. I'm just getting very pure, innocent. Oh, they're showing me Bambi and like deer with like those big doughy brown eyes that are like, what's traffic, you know, kind of like that. That's probably how you see this person or how, how this person saw you, okay. But I, when you mature to this Knight of Cups and make a very polished, refined, respectable, but still very sentimental and heart-centered message, it's, it makes everyone really happy. Let's take a look at this now. I feel like this is after your, your approach. I feel like you send a message or you like email, you, you offer your cup again. You offer your cup again, that's what it is. You offer your cup again and this could be their response or this could be, I don't know, this is really fast because we have the Knight of Swords, the fastest knight, and then we have the Chariot. Tell us about the Knight of Swords, the Chariot, and the Two of Cups, please. We'll That's fast, friends. That is a fast reunion. Sorry. That's a fast reunion. That is really, really, really fast. Double Knight of Swords. I feel like you'll get a response pretty quickly. Pretty quickly. I feel like they've been waiting for you or you've been waiting for this person and it's really, really sweet. It's interesting that this is what's being emphasized and not the part about greater power, greater need for divine guidance. That's interesting. So instead of like explaining all of that, this is basically like what you'll get when you do the work, when you, you know what I'm saying? When you channel divine guidance, when you ch honestly channel divinity. It's, it's really simple. I mean, we don't even, we don't really need much more. Like this is very simple and very straightforward. So let's just get more Oracle for you because it's fun. Okay. Yeah, that's all you need. That's all you need to do. If you are the if you are the if you are the bumbler kerfuffler, that's all you got to do. Is is um watch the movie. I don't know. You know, get inspired. You have two cards. We have the Huron. Let go of convention and follow your own unique path. So your Knight of Cups could be different from someone else's Knight of Cups, but you can still be polished and refined and unique and individual. A little bit of unconventionality with this, I feel as well. Duck is your other card. Finding comfort and balance in simple ways. You have support all around you. So it's like be comfortable with yourself because that page of cups is insecure. And you could have been coming across as insecure emotionally or otherwise, or this other person could have come across as a little insecure. It's like, oh, I'm gonna offer my cup, but I don't have anything to put in my cup. Everyone else puts water in their cup, but I, I, I'm gonna put a fish in my cup. That'll sh be great. That'll show them all of the, b like, it could have been like that. <laughs> it could have been like that where you just, okay, what's the bottom of the deck? Kingfisher, Kingfisher energy. Prosperity is flowing. Have faith that you will receive it in the perfect form. Prosperity is flowing. This person, like, this is so fast. This is really fast, like fast reunion. Coming back to Geza. Moonology. Moonology. What else do we need to know? What advice, what other overall advice or guidance? Divine guidance. What divine guidance do we need for this situation? Got like three cards here. You've got a time to give rather than take. New moon in Virgo energy. That is Romeo. That is Romeo offering the cup. That is being generous. And like I said, be generous even if it's going against what your ego wants. Boom. You also have step out of your comfort zone. North node energy. 
which could be, I'm not getting ego in the tarot, I'm getting that more in the astrology, but if that applies, apply it. Sorry, there's like all these little hairs, okay. Also, you have bring love into the situation, new moon and Aquarius energy, and then adjustments are required, third quarter moon energy. Not bad at all, not bad at all, kiddo. Bring love, that's a lot of love. The Knight of Cups brings a lot of love. That's a lot of love, it really is. They can be a little fickle and whatnot. I'm not getting that. With the Six of Cups, there's a lot of love already in the situation. There's a lot of goodwill at the very least. If this is not like between family members or someone that feels like a soulmate or someone, more likely there's someone you probably had a past life connection with and this little learning curve, this little evolution, this little maturation, emotional maturation is part of your karma. It's a little thing. It's a really little thing before you can like, there's, I feel like there's so much other stuff that you and your partner or you and this person have yet to do. That's the, like the real beginning. But it's like, okay, retrograde season. Okay, we're going back. We're going back to love. Venus retrograde. All right, lovers. Let's see what, what will come out for you for if this is a love situation, a love relationship. It's relationship. So relationship-based. So I feel like you can build anything on it. Work, career, love, money, success, business, creativity, whatever you want. This is too many cards. It's like half the deck. Is there any love? Is there any, anything at all? It takes this long for the perfect. Express your love. Go ahead and make the romantic gesture and trust. This situation is calling for you to have faith. So it's like once you express your love, once you offer that goodwill, once you offer some value, once you are polished and refined, trust, let it go. Let it let it go. Surrender to the universe. You've done what you can do. You've done your part in healing this karma. If that's you, if you're the Page of Cups, if you're on the other side, then you're probably going to feel very happy and very relieved that this person grew up and that you two can move forward like equals because that's the two of cups it's like equality equal give and take maturity reciprocity mm, okay i didn't mean to say reciprocity but i do okay all right guys that concludes our tarot report correspondence my email is thefirstartigan at gmail.com. Feel free to let me know of anything you'd like to see on the channel. Old business. Nice. New business. Kinda. Not really. Okay, I guess I hereby officially adjourn this super short meeting, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your support. Thank you for the good karma exchange. I love whoever this is. Whatever situation this is, you have all of my like blessings and support. And um, this is great. So so thank you for sharing that energy with me. It's, it's great for the community. If this is you, feel free to comment how this goes and help along everyone else in the, in the community with your stories. All right, guys, I hereby officially adjourn the meeting. Take care. I love you guys forever and ever and always and many blessings on your heads. Bye.